And three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tech Talks. I'm Victor here with Julie. And we have uh, actually uh, Google just announced today uh, some pixel updates um, that are pretty interesting here. If I pulled this up here. And they had a, a feature rollout for Pixel phones, um, specifically mostly uh, uh, Pixel phones. This isn't like an Android update. Uh, so there is, for the Pixel 4, the new play pause gesture, because right now Pixel 4 is the first Pixel with the motion sense. So they're updating that quite a bit. Uh, Pixel 2 now gets live captions. So when recording, it's able to do live captions on what's being said. What? <laughs> what? Your hairs. Oh, sorry. Goes off. Um, car crash detection is being rolled out on the Pixel 4 in Australia and UK. Um, this is a feature that they're uh, starting to test out, it seems, uh, that has the... Car crashes, like essentially the Pixel uses the accelerometer and things like that to test if you're in a impact with a car. And then we'll automatically dial out 911 or whatever the services required hmm. are in your country. And uh, so it's essentially, yeah, just your OnStar, or uh, I think that was what it was back in the day where it would automatically have sensors and things like that, but your phone is doing that for you. Uh, so they're rolling out this. This isn't like a, a wide feature yet. They're just testing it out, it seems, in UK and Australia before they ro mass roll out. Uh, there's also new AR effects for duo and video calls, which um, AR so, is... augmented reality. Yeah. Um, I, if you used Facebook Messenger, you've probably dealt with this before, um, changing your face to different emotes and whatever it is that they have. They're rolling those out to Duo as well. iPhone has also the emoji kind of creation thing, and I think they're coming out with something similar. There's some app, I think, that does that too. The Facebook Messenger? No. Oh. Like... um. Snapchat. Oh, Snapchat. Yeah, Snapchat uses AR effects and things yeah. like that, too. So they, they're they rolling that out for duo calls. Um, Pixel 4 front-facing selfie counter. Uh, the Pixel 4 essentially can, uh, some camera fixing. Um, 169 new emoji. And uh, this is actually the one that I thought was cool, was uh, the new power button wallet menu. And this is going to be uh, for Pixel 3, Pixel 3a, and Pixel 4, I think. Or maybe that's just what this specific subdomain is. Uh, essentially, though, uh, with Google Pay, you can it's just like Apple Pay. You can have your wallet in there or your cards on there and you could tap to pay um with this uh it also is able to keep track of boarding passes and other uh um what else uh, memberships that you are a part of like if you're a hotel membership and things like that it does uh, keep track of that um what this new interface is is if you hold the power button when it'll bring up the power menu at the bottom of the screen, but at the top of the screen, it'll actually bring up like a quick, um, uh, a quick menu for the Quick Pay app uh, or the Google Pay app, so that you could, if you had multiple cards and you didn't want to use your default card for any reason, instead of having to fish out your Quick Pay app, you could just hold the power button menu and then it'll you could select between the card right there um, hmm. without opening up the app itself. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting, this quick access menu. Uh, scheduled dark mode. So if you don't want dark mode all the time on your phone, you just want it you know, during the night hours and you want regular mode during the day hours, 
uh, you could schedule it. Um, and then automation update rules for Wi-Fi. Uh, not that's more of a backend thing. Uh, the uh, screen adaptness and Pixel Four fixes. Just uh, some uh, uh, other smaller fixes that are running rolled out for Pixel Four. Uh, but overall, it was uh, quite interesting the the features that they are coming out with for Pixel, and that eventually will be in probably most phones in a generation or two. Now, did you have anything that you wanted to talk about for Tech Talks? <laughs> you mean the thing that I brought up to you the other day? Yeah. Okay, I guess I can. <laughs> um. So, re let's see, remembering what it was. Um, Online ticket sales. Ticket sales, that was it. So, recently I saw a headline about Taylor Swift having difficulties with the online ticket sales because, and this is not exclusive to Taylor Swift, it's true of other um, high, I can't think of what the word is, high, not priority, but high, um, high demand, I guess it would be, events where tickets are being basically stolen from people's accounts. So there's a lack of security around ticket buying and it is kind of a difficult thing because when you're buying tickets online, there's no tangible thing. It's just you pay and then they send you the code or the virtual ticket, but then there's a problem where people are then hacking into accounts and taking those tickets, transferring them to themselves and then selling them from that other account. The from what I, I've read up on this, they use two what is it? Two step the um two factor authentication. That's it. Two factor authentication to verify when you go to buy concert tickets. And and now I've forgotten which website this was through specifically. I think Ticket it was Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster. Um but they do not use two two step verification for just logging in to your ticket account nor for transferring tickets so people are buying the tickets with this false sense of security because it took the two-step verification to buy the tickets and then having them stolen right from their account and being sold by someone else and we you know within the last year we also experienced a similar sort of different kind of problem so to give you background on this, last summer we attempted to go see Eddie Izzard here in San Francisco, and we ordered tickets online through the theater itself, not through like a third party, th directly through the theater's website. Victor is the one that actually had ordered them, and the plan was then when um, when we got the receipt in the Gmail, then the, it would be added to the Google Calendar, and then we would go. We bought them a couple months ahead of time. But the problem that turned out was the theater's website does not have basic security protection. So San Francisco, like a major city, the major theater company here, they did not have where you enter your email address twice. They didn't have even base, a basic check to make sure that the email address you entered was in true email format. They don't even have like most scam or spam accounts where it like sends an email just to double check that it's a verified email account and so what happened in our case was victor typed in the email address dot com and then his finger accidentally hit the l and so that's where they tried sending our concert tickets but we didn't know until it was too late that we it came to the month of the concert and we were like hey wait a minute we are not the concert, but the the comedy show. We and we realized we didn't have it on our calendar for some reason. So we started looking into it, and we never got an email. We never even got a receipt. Nothing from the theater company. So we like we really started having to look into it, and it turns out we had missed the performance. And we contacted the theater company, and they were saying that it was not their fault at all. They were insisting that they do have basic protections, that, that you do have to enter your email twice, which 
you don't. <laughs> but that's all besides the point. It was disappointing for us because there weren't those basic protections in place. We paid money, quite a bit of money, for these tickets that we never got because the web transaction never actually went through for our end. They were still able to process it, even though they never sent us a receipt, even though it... Yeah, so basically <laughs> uh, what it comes down to is um, there are sites that don't utilize the full security suite of uh, options. And uh, when it came to our situation, um, we put a typo in and that typo didn't have a, a basic system that most websites have are checking to see if it's a valid email address. Um, then, you know, they have validating the email address before making an account because you, this is one of the sites that you have to make an account. I think it was like SHO. Most, things. most places make So you have yeah. to validate the email address before, uh, for the account. Um, they had bounce back tickets, uh, call back, the whole uh, the thing. Um, what, there was a lot of that. And when it came to the Taylor Swift, I believe that was the concert that was being... Um, that a lot of scalpers ended up stealing tickets from people there the site like she mentioned didn't use two-factor authentication when transferring tickets um on to end the the site uh, on their end what uh, to reply to this happening was to make sure that you have a strong email or, or a strong password. Yeah, yeah, that was Ticketmaster's advice. Make and sure you have a strong password. Strong password is definitely step one. And there's uh, definitely a two-way street to this kind of stuff. Yeah. You having a strong password is definitely one. And we, uh, Merchants like we've, need to be more accountable to make yeah. sure there are basic protections in place when you're paying money for something and they're supposed to be fulfilling that and they're kind of not. As we... Uh, um, have mentioned before that there is uh, Google Chrome has a built-in password generator, um, and then you can ch Google Chrome or your Google account has a password uh, um, security where that it'll check to make sure all your passwords are um, different, and you can change the ones that aren't. And uh, with that, on the uh, other end things like uh, if you are a website developer that has accounts and buying and selling, making sure that, yeah, you validate email addresses, you uh, double check email addresses, making a, type it in twice. Um, you validate the email addresses not only just through um, checking if it's a real email address, but checking if it's their email address by making sure that they reply to your uh, validation request. And uh, you have two-factor authentication. Google um, has a, Google and Microsoft have uh, two-factor authentication apps that you can plug an API into your website so that they can so that people can utilize those. Can you so can you do that if you had Ticketmaster? You can make your account two-step verification. No, oh. that's something on uh, Ticketmaster. They have to have two-factor authentication as part of their site, and then you opt into their site, and then it'll give you a code and everything. So uh, you so there's multitude of things um, right now that there is a lot of sites lacking. And it's actually funny. Most of the bigger sites outside of social media sites, social media sites are usually pretty good at keeping security um, to a high. But the a lot of these big sites that uh, have to deal with merchant processing don't have to uh, don't have many of these things. And if they do, they're not front and center like um, I think Amazon has two-factor authentication, but it still might be rudimentary. I think I don't know if they have an app-based one or if it's still sending text to your phone. Hmm. Um, they I know like places like Newegg, Tiger Direct, uh, they their app, uh, their accounts are pretty open. Um, this was I think SHO that we talked about. Ticketmaster though, like that's the biggest ticket-selling website. In, it's, yeah, and especially in since the U.S. Like you're not getting physical tickets; they're just 
their website has these virtual tickets and it seems like it's the from my perspective it seems like it's completely ticket master's fault that this is happening and it seems like a complete oversight that they didn't make a two-step verification process for transferring tickets that seems like kind of a no-brainer given that the way the goods are delivered and that they require it for buying the tickets and now that this is happening, maybe they'll make a, sh a shift, a change. Most sites, uh, or unless you, uh, most sites require that you, if you are using a specific laptop and things like that, they have it. You could set it so that that laptop doesn't require the two-factor uh, authentication. Um, but then, usually at every login, they require two-factor authentication. So it would be even yeah even so, if it was just a login yeah uh, so even if they had a weak password there still should have been a, a two factor authentication system there um, and I think uh, the other part to that is a lot of websites have it but don't advertise it like uh, 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 and don't press it hard enough um, I think there's a few websites that do actually do really well. They give you a pop up almost every time you turn on, open up the website, and they ask you should two fa you should increase use two factor authentication. Um, but I think a lot of them don't do that, and uh, so there's definitely uh, some things that are on the merchant side that should be updated. Yeah, and. Security in general, it's uh, for um, computers and networks and uh, just your personal security. Uh, it, best thing you can do is use two-factor authentication whenever it's available. Um, use the uh, tools at hand uh, if you need to. If you don't want to come up with convoluted passwords um, and remember them all, Chrome can save that for you. Uh, Google... I don't know of any time Google has actually been hacked for with uh, names and passwords and things like that being released. I'm pretty sure most of the time, Google when Google messes up, it's their own internal mistake. Hmm. Um, like the last time we reported on it was when Google sent the wrong photos to the wrong people, oh, yeah. but that was all internal. That was not anything. That was not somebody hacking. So somebody hacking into your Google profile. They are probably one of the most secure people. I'd say even like if somebody's hacking into them, they'd be hacking into the Pentagon too. Like, so. I don't know. But but yeah. that's kind of we're getting beside the point. Yeah, we're getting the the point is uh the there's tools at hand um to utilize to have different passwords to protect your accounts and things like that. Um, and I know Google can kind of seem like the big brother that the government uh, used to be uh, considered, but the they also are very secure. So, and uh, you, it's not much more secure just being on a paper in your house, kind of a thing. All your passwords is what I'm saying. I don't really know about any of that, but. Anyways, that's it for today. We uh, hope you enjoyed, and we will be back next week. Hopefully, we will uh, have more on it. We didn't have much uh, today because it was kind of a short week. Oh, there is one other thing. Uh, GDC. What's um, that? It's a, uh, it's a game expo, essentially. Game developing conference? I can't remember what it was. Sure, go on. Uh, that sounds about right, actually. Um, they're clo they actually uh, shut down the GDC this year due to the coronavirus. Mm. Um, many of the publishers that were at GDC, Sony, Microsoft, um, almost, uh, Epic Games, uh, almost everybody pulled out. And so last week they announced that it's just going to be shut down. They're going to try to postpone it till summer. Who knows if that actually happens? I think that they're just trying to save face for the people that have paid for tickets already. Yeah. Um, it's uh, quite... Summer. Yeah, it, it's uh, quite the thing. But this is, it was back into security. Um, a lot of companies are trying to be more secure with their people um, by... Yeah. Right, like one single person that is sick at 
some place in Microsoft due to going to a conference could shut down that entire um that entire branch. So yeah. you don't uh so definitely uh it, uh you'll see a lot of companies being extra precautious and you'll be seeing a lot of uh halts in manufacturing and things like that due to that uh and that also might end up uh being why less news is reported because not a lot of things are happening unfortunately at any rate anyway have a great got one guys <laughs> we'll see you next week well then. Thank you for watching Tech Talks. If you liked the video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.